Good morning. It is uh, 6.30 in the morning and uh, it's going to be a bit of a compressed morning but I've gotten a lot more of these questions about what my diet looks like, how much I eat in a day, what I eat in a day and I have been very reluctant to do these for a number of reasons um, but I am on a compressed morning schedule so I'm going to get to my disclaimer in a bit uh, but you know give the people what they want, right? Um, Pardon the sweat, we just got back from our walk, and uh, if I can find some, I'll flash some stats from the walk up on screen, and it's August in South Florida, so it's hot, I don't care what time it is. I am going to the gym in just a few minutes, maybe like five, I hope, and what I normally do in the morning is have uh, three eggs and a bowl of frozen fruit, but if I eat eggs too close to when I go exercise, my stomach gets super upset, when I eat egg whites in general, my stomach gets super upset. I don't really know why. Eggs normally are totally fine. It's just, I don't know if it's like placebo effect or whatever, but I try to, you know, avoid that. So uh, I got some frozen fruit right here, let me show you. And 370, 371 grams of this mixed frozen fruit. I used to exercise first thing in the morning, like 5.30, fasted, maybe like pre-workout, but that's about it. And I felt okay until I just happened to have low blood sugar one morning and had a bunch of food. And I went to the gym and I felt super strong. So ever since then, I, I have to eat something before I lift. I don't know why. It's just, again, it might be placebo effect. I don't know. But that's just what I like to do. So that's what I continue to do. So I'm going to crush this fruit. I'm going to have some pre-workout. And then I'm going to go to the gym. And I will see you for my post-workout meal, shake, one of those. I have no food for you. I'm sorry, but I have no food for you. Do you want to pee? All right, let's go pee. Come on. Of course, dogs get precedence when I get home. I had a really good shoulders and chest day, and yes, I put that in the right order. Shoulders first, chest second, because my shoulders are definitely a weak point of mine, so I decided to do them first. But still a good day. Any day where you can lift weights is a good day. And of course, the dog takes precedence. For the longest time, I was always the guy, post-workout, protein in the shaker as fast as you can, shake it up, throw it back. And then, you know, I saw the research saying that the anabolic window that people thought was like a half an hour to two hours is actually closer to 48 hours. So just get your protein in over the course of the day. But it's a good reminder to have something to eat after you work out to make sure you get your protein. So I don't have the protein stuff immediately after the workout because I think it's better to get into your muscles. I do it as, hey, this is just the timing that is convenient for me so that I don't forget. So keep that in mind when you go through this stuff. I used to be the guy who had just the plain stuff. And then for a while it was, let's put in you know the protein powder and whatever kind of milk you like plus like oats and peanut butter and all sorts of berries and all sorts of seeds and then blend that up and that quickly became a 1000 calorie shake. I'm like, well, uh, you know, if you're trying to gain weight, that's great, but I'm not trying to gain weight. I'm trying to have something that tastes halfway decent, something that will provide some nutrition and something that will keep me full without jacking up my calories for the rest of the day. So I have been working with exactly this and bear with me, it's remarkably complicated. I've been working with this for a while and it seems to have suited me really well. Two things you need. Well, I guess three. Frozen fruit, I like this one. Protein powder and water. I like to measure this stuff out because it's easier for me to keep track of when insulin dosing because if you're new here, I'm a type one diabetic. Celebrated my 29th anniversary a few uh, days ago. Diversary is anniversary of diabetes diagnosis. Yes, it was 1994 when I was diagnosed. Maybe some of you weren't alive, but I'm going to show you just how much this whole thing weighs so that you can see like, you know, it's not a lot of calories and I'll show you the calorie count too. But this thing says per cup or 140 grams is 70 calories. It's not bad. Half a gram of fat, 17 grams of carbohydrates, five of which being dietary fiber and trace protein. Fiber, you can't really digest. And it's fruit, it's mostly water anyway, so. So we dump a bunch of that in there. I have it, I, I can eyeball it pretty well. But it's usually, well we're gonna, 
have a theme to today. This is 370 grams. Let me pull you over here to show you. I promise I'm not lying. See, it's just frozen fruit. And then we take our frozen fruit and we come over to Mr. Fawcett. And we fill her up to where the fruit is almost completely covered. That's just kind of been my litmus test for, you know, is this gonna be creamy, not creamy, gross, not gross. So you can see that there's water, frozen berries, and we're up to 692 grams. And then the protein powder. You can use pretty much whatever you want, whatever you like. I found that I like this. This one's Legion's Fruity Cereal. I've been using it for a while. I really like it. I think Legion has good products. I'm not sponsored by them or affiliated with them. I had a, a discount code for a while and it turns out that like one person who happened to be a friend of mine was using it and that was kind of it. So they were like, yeah, your audience isn't doing this, so goodbye. And I said, that's fair. I'm not mad at it. They still make good stuff and I still use it. So um, there's a lot of reasonably reputable companies out there. There are far more terrible ones. But for me, two scoops afterwards. So it's about, I think it's 66 grams, just to make sure that's right. Yep. So, 693. So, I'll show you. We have 759 grams worth of eat in there. If I had to guess, I'd say that's close to a pound and a half. And it is a guess, because I don't know the conversion off the top of my head. Well, I could just press the unit button, couldn't I? 26.8 ounces. A little bit more than a pound and a half. Cool. Good for me. And that's all it is. And if you're trying to lose weight, or at least maintain and be you know, kind of conscious about the amount of things and what exactly you put in your body, I think frozen fruit's a great way to go. Like I said, a cup has 70 calories of, of, of this one. Don't get me wrong, there are other ones that I eat often that are a little bit more calorie dense, but I think the most calorie dense one I have is uh, 90 calories per cup. I think frozen strawberries is like 50 calories per cup. It's like nothing. But when going about this sort of thing, fruit's a great option. A lot of water, a lot of fiber, a lot of volume, not a ton of calories. A lot of people will tell me, Mike, you're diabetic. Why are you eating all this fruit, all this sugar? And I say, after a very long sigh, that if you watch your insulin levels over the course of time, depending on what your diet looks like, you can find patterns. Since I've been doing it this way, my insulin requirements have been down like 25%. Like I usually get, I don't know, a reasonable day is somewhere in the mid 40s as far as units of insulin. Now I'm almost always in the 30s, sometimes as low as like 32, 33. So it's less insulin. My blood sugar is still as controlled, if not better than it has been. It seems to be working for me. But again, we'll get to that disclaimer um, after I blend and consume this and after I clean myself because I'm sweaty and gross. Oh, and after I feed the dogs, they probably want to eat today too, right? All right, snack time. And as you may have guessed, back to this bad boy. Another bowl. Four hundred and fifty-seven grams. It says it right there. And I'm gonna start with this because I'm really hungry. And I have cod that was still a little frozen. It's in the it's in the sink right now. Uh, I'm gonna throw that in the air fryer in a bit. But I am too hungry to wait for having these at the same time. So. This now, about later. All right, let's talk my disclaimer while I uh, enjoy my cod finally. It's like 2.30 or something like that. Cheers. I know a lot of people hate these kinds of videos because they think, well, this person is telling me that I must do exactly what this person does. And if that was the case, I would hate them too. But the internet is a beautiful thing. The internet should be, although it's not, I think it should be about sharing information for whoever's watching you to get ideas. And all I wanna do is to provide ideas. I wanna be transparent about how I live my life because a lot of people look up to doctors. Some people might look up to me. You have your own problems. <laughs> what I will say is I want people to understand that the one thing maybe that they've been taught throughout the entire course of their life 
is not the only thing that's out there. There's a lot of different ways of going about living one's life that may be considered healthy to many people. The way I go about my life to many people seems unhealthy. People think that I'm too restrictive, I'm too this, I'm too that. I've said this before, I'll say it a million times. I don't restrict anything from my diet. I eat anything that I want to. It just so happens that I have a particular set of goals in mind that some foods align better than others. Oh, by the way, some foods that don't align with my goals that I would consider eating don't align with the happiness of my intestines. So I tend to avoid those. Additionally, there are some things that I just don't like. You've always seen these crazed, either shirtless or sleeveless t-shirted guys in the grocery store saying, this is, I, I, I'm this person and you should never eat this because. Like, I'm never gonna drink Dr. Pepper because I don't like it. I'm not gonna be a big cheesecake guy because I don't really like it. So my disclaimer is this. I don't want you to ever think that I'm telling you that you must do exactly what I'm doing or some reasonable facsimile thereof. I'm just telling you, this is what I do. And if you get some inspiration from it, if you get an idea from it, awesome. That's all I ever want. If you decide that one day you're going to copy exactly what I do, uh, maybe don't because you're not me. But, you know, I'm not at your house. I can't control what you do. So do what you're going to do. And if you tell me that I'm an idiot, then fine. I'm sure I've been called worse by better. There's one more thing. A lot of people will look at me like I'm not having, you know, a square meal often anyway and not by design but that's just kind of how my life works and how I want to have this work people will talk about nutrient timing and having this before that and most of its crap but if there is one hint of one shred of truth to any of that stuff it might get you like one one thousandth of a percent of what you're goals might happen to be versus if you just stick to the damn basics, you're going to get 95% of the way there anyway. So yeah, I'm having a plate of fish at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon because I can. Part of this is to show you that, yeah, the way I eat is weird and that's okay. If the way you eat is weird too, that's okay too. The three square meals a day isn't a necessity. It fits. And it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's not bad, but it's not a necessity. Just like some people who are fasting for 16 hours and then they have an eight hour feeding window. Well, what if it's eight hours in one minute? Have you just ruined your life? No. Anyway, don't take this stuff too seriously. Spread your, open your horizons and uh, just don't be miserable. That's a big key. Maybe I should live with that. We just got new bar stools, so I'm gonna eat my meal on the new bar stools. It's uh, 5.20, and I just made myself my little plate of burgers that I normally end the day with. I have a lot of things to say on that front. One, a lot of people will demonize you for eating tons of red meat. The studies that I've read don't distinguish between good quality, lean cuts of meat versus crap. They also don't really do a good job distinguishing people with generally healthy lifestyles and people with not generally healthy lifestyles. Need more data. I think the majority of people who have been studied who do lean heavily towards the red meat department also don't take care of themselves as well as some of us in my generation doing the sorts of things that I do day in and day out. I think those are two very different people. So. I'm not sure how well that data is gonna correlate. There's about 100 grams of protein in this meal. There's been forever this thing that you can only absorb 30 grams of protein at a time. First of all, no. Second of all, what is at a time? And third of all, what exactly are you trying to get to? Some of the studies suggest that you can only use 30 to 40 grams of protein at a time for muscle protein synthesis. Your body needs protein for a ton of other stuff, so like your body will use it, don't worry. But here's the other question I have. What is at a time, right? Because if I consume this 100 grams of protein over the course of an hour and a half, 
does that differ than if I were to inhale it in the course of a minute and a half? Probably, but I don't know. So you take all that stuff with a grain of salt and just kind of live your life. I just looked at my app and I'm not quite at my goal for protein and I'm quite far south of my calorie goal as well. Fats, carbohydrates, I kind of don't care, but more of that in a minute. So I'm probably gonna eat some more. That being said, I have a ton of stuff to do. So I'm gonna, you know, scroll through over here for a second. Why don't I really care about fats and, pro and carbohydrates? It's just kind of the extra stuff. My goal when I'm trying to lose weight or just trying to exist is to be as healthy as possible, to be lean, but not so lean that I'm going to be ill, which is, for me, it's never happened. It's not even come close to happening, so don't worry about it. <laughs> but you see some of these professional bodybuilders, they get so, so lean that you know they, they start falling apart. And I never wanna be anywhere near there especially for any prolonged period of time. I don't plan on competing in a bodybuilding competition. I think because I'm a type one diabetic, I'm technically like in the enhanced division, even though if I didn't take insulin, I would die, but whatever. But like I said, health, being reasonably lean, and also preserving as much muscle as I can when trying to drop a couple pounds, because if you drop weight, you're gonna lose fat and you're probably gonna lose a little bit of muscle. It is possible to lose fat and not to lose muscle, and it is possible to lose fat and gain muscle even. But being so, so precise on exactly those measurements and having tons of people look and see what you do or decades and decades and decades of diligent experience on your own part, it's kind of not worth it to me at this stage in my life. So yeah, if I lose a little bit of muscle, fine. I wanna maintain as much strength as I can, but Typically what'll happen is you put on a little bit of weight and you put on a little bit of muscle and then you lose a little bit of weight You lose a little bit of muscle, but hopefully less than you put on before That's the goal anyway So that's why I like to make sure my calories are not super low because the lower they are the more likely you're gonna lose muscle and make sure my protein is high enough that hey I got plenty of stuff to feed my muscles. I don't need to eat them. There's more than enough fat coming in. You will have noticed that there wasn't a huge fat content in the stuff that I eat and that's kind of on purpose Sort of. When I talk to anybody about weight loss, whether it's friends, family, patients, whomever, I harp all the time on calorie density. Essentially, how many calories are in one unit of food? Whether it's volume, weight, whatever. If you break it up into the macronutrients, protein, carbs, fat, protein and carbs have about four calories per gram of weight. Fats have nine. So if you take 100 grams of fat and 100 grams of protein, they weigh the same but the fat has 900 calories in it and the protein has 400 calories in it. From just that standpoint, it makes sense, okay, go more towards protein. Now, of course, protein takes more energy to absorb and digest than fat does, but nuance compared to the basics that I like to push. But that's not the only thing I wanna talk about when I talk about calorie density. You'll notice I eat a ton of fruit. I probably had like three pounds already today. You know what fruit has in it? In spades, that doesn't have a lot of calories? Water. Yeah, fruit's got a lot of water in it. It's got a lot of fiber in it. The carbohydrate content that I get from it is enough for me. Sure, I do eat vegetables a lot. Um, not today, apparently. Maybe I'll have some later, I don't know. But vegetables are the same thing. Lots of water, lots of fiber, a lot of volume, less sugar, not a lot of calories. I actually did this uh, <laughs> in a room with a patient before. To get to 2,000 calories of celery, you need 16 and a quarter gallons of celery. Like, you know those five gallon buckets you get from like Home Depot or something? Yeah, more than three of those. I'm, I'm good, thanks. So if we're talking about things like weight loss, if you find somebody say, this is the only thing that works for anybody, run the other direction. Because there's a lot of things that you can do that steer you in that direction, right? There's, I can't tell you how many things that I've told people. The first one is usually just add more vegetables to your meals. It's more volume. It's not a lot of calories. It's gonna end up suffocating out some of the more calorie dense foods so that you overall consume fewer calories. Makes sense, right? Let's say you have a shoe box full of food that you get for the day, right? That's all your body can hold. And let's say it's full of mac and cheese. At first that sounds terrific and then after about 20 minutes you start hating yourself. If you remove a 
third of that mac and cheese and put vegetables in it, let's say vegetables you enjoy so you're not just like crying all the time, that's not two thirds the calories, it's a little bit more than two thirds the calories, but it's a lot less than you had previously. So that's the whole mindset behind that. If I was starting over from my heaviest, that's probably what I would have done, but I didn't know any better when I was at my heaviest at like 285. That was like oh, how, 11 years ago? God, that was a long time ago. But when I started, I had moved, so I just went all in. And some people need that sort of all in. If they have the support system, if they have the resources, then it's fantastic. And it's not just financial resources, it's the do I have to deal with, and not negatively, but do I have to deal with a significant other that doesn't want to do this? Do I have to deal with children that don't want to do this? Do I have to deal with a schedule that makes this more inconvenient? That's you know stuff to deal with, but I said, screw it, I'm gonna be the weird guy bringing a lunchbox everywhere, and I'm gonna put a refrigerator in my office, and like, office to drive to, because the refrigerator for my home office is like 30 feet, I can make it. And I'm gonna be that guy, and uh, hopefully it works. And at some point my brain just turned off and I was on autopilot and all of a sudden I was 225 instead of 285. And then I had somebody I hadn't seen in a while come and pointed out to me and I thought, holy crap, it's working. So all or nothing, one of the little things that you could do at a time, maybe two or three of them at a time, there's a gazillion little things. So whatever's right for you is right for you and sometimes you don't know until you try 30 of them. It is what it is. But I sincerely hope you got some value, you learned something from this video. Again, I will never say you must do it as I do it. This is just what I do. If you got some information, if you got some ideas, fabulous. It's summertime right now, frozen fruit, go buy some, They're, it's delicious. Or don't if you don't like it, I don't care. Uh, but I'm gonna finish my food and I hope you got some value out of this and I will uh, see you in the next one. <laughs>